God bless you. Praise the Lord and greetings. This is Pastor Carrie Holmes. I'm standing in for Dr. Holmes. And this is your hour of deliverance. And we thank God for the opportunity to come before you today and to greet you in the name of the Lord and to share with you the prophetic implications of the birth of Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to look at the revelation and come before God with expectation in this season as we celebrate and remember the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the season of Advent, the season and uh, time when we remember the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Of course, we're mindful of his sacrifice, his life, and all that he represents in the earth and in our lives personally all throughout the year. But this certainly is a special season uh, that allows us to reflect on the goodness of God, how redemption was part of the plan of God. And because prophecy was such a distinguishing uh, part and portion of that uh, time in history, we want to look at how awesome it is that God has given us an opportunity uh, to see some keys in prophecy through uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. We're going to be looking at the scripture today uh, several places as we look at the birth of Jesus Christ, both that were prophesied and that were fulfilled in the life of Jesus Christ. And through this prophecy, we see so many times when uh, the Lord Jesus Christ um, not only fulfilled scripture, but he also uh, shows that there were several prophecies that he made that came to pass and that we are yet seeing come to pass. Of course, we know that we're also living in the last days and in end time prophecy, we can see the voice of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, the light of the world, uh, continuing to shine on us today. The Bible says the entrance of your word, O Lord, gives light. Thank God for the light of Jesus Christ. He was the word that became flesh. John tells us in chapter one that you and I were able as humankind to behold the glory of the Lord, the begotten, the only begotten of the father, that he was full of grace and truth. Jesus said himself, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So if we see that the word was made manifest in this earth and that Jesus himself said the words that I continue to speak to you, they will be spirit and they will be life. Wouldn't it be awesome for us to be able to recognize how that prophetic word that became flesh, the prophetic word that became flesh that we saw as Jesus Christ, beholding the, the glory of the Lord as the, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then we continue to see how that word was made manifest by Jesus' life and his fulfillment of the Father's will. How much would we be able to understand how to walk in that prophetic word today? So let's take the time to do that today. We're going to pray and ask the Lord to illumine his word in us and through us. And we're going to ask that uh, whatever needs you might have at this time uh, for revelation and for direction, that God would meet you in a special way through prophetic impartation, revelation, and give you prophetic expectation so that as we pray, you have an exceed of expectancy that's sown in your spirit to see the wondrous works of God manifest in your life. And that is what we will pray in Jesus name. Now, of course, we want to invite you to um, share the broadcast. Dr. Holmes uh, invites you uh, to join her every Friday afternoon right here live on the broadcast of the Hour of Deliverance. But we also want to let you know that you can see the archives, that you can log online and also connect with her on Facebook for a number of revelatory expectants and pieces that will uh, encourage your heart and that will uh, cause you to be expectant and cause you to uh, look for the things of God to become manifest in your life. Let's pray together and thank the Lord for this hour of deliverance. Lord God, we come before you in this time and this season as we remember the birth of Jesus Christ, asking that you would give the word of God, Lord, to make seed in us and to develop an expectancy within us, particularly in this time and season. 
We understand through your word that it is a season of light, that it is a season of remembering, that it is the season of Advent. And Lord, in whatever ways we will be celebrating and remembering you at this time, at this Christmas season, God, we pray that the word and the light of your word would burn deeply in our never go out and that that which you have spoken to come to pass in our lives to come to pass in the lives of those that are listening to come to pass in the lives of those that are watching we pray lord god that that and that very destiny that very plan that you have for them god that it would be manifest that nothing would stand against it we pray that no weapon formed against the people watching and listening would be able to prosper and every tongue that rises up against them that they would condemn and show to be in the wrong. Lord, we thank you for the salvation of souls that has come through the preaching of your word here in the hour of deliverance. We thank you for the ministry. We thank you, God, for Dr. Holmes. And we pray that your glory and anointing would continue to rest on her. The work of the ministry, the time and study that she puts into your word and on those that hear and listen. May they be encouraged today in every single way. This we pray in your name. Amen. Well, amen and amen. We thank God for you. And of course, we again invite you to reach out online, on Facebook, through our social media extensions so that you can continue to be encouraged. Now, if you're connected on Facebook with Rev. K.E. Holmes, you know that Dr. Holmes has a number of revelatory antidotes that she shares daily. And those daily inspirations can come to you through Twitter or through Facebook. So be sure to connect with us there and be sure to look her up at the Hour of Deliverance or Rev. K.E. Holmes on Facebook Dot com. Once you register and connect with her there on Facebook, you'll get those regular uh, pieces of information and revelation coming right to you online, on your phone, or wherever you connect on social media. So we have the opportunity to continue to be encouraged in the Word of God and to keep ourselves uplifted and energized in the Holy Word of God. So let's get right into our study today and our time of sharing. Um, specifically because this is the hour of deliverance, we're going to talk uh, and move the conversation through our next uh, several segments uh, in ways that really speak to our deliverance. There's so many uh, directives and so many foundational principles which Dr. Holmes has shared here on the program a number of times about prophecy. Uh, that uh, the the prophetic uh, moves, as Dr. Holmes says, at the speed of light and moves you when you step into it at the speed of light. Some of that she shared, and I hope you've taken a hold of that because we're going to run now through the Word of God and run to catch up to this time and season that we're in, not only to understand it, but to begin to activate some things in our lives that we can take a hold of. Let me just share with you uh, some of the uh, some of the scriptures that who Jesus was. I'm sure you've seen them before in Isaiah, uh, announcing that uh, unto us a child would be born, unto us a son would be given, uh, that the government would be upon his shoulders, his name shall be called Emmanuel. So throughout the Old Testament scriptures, we see a number of prophetic announcements about the person and the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, the exciting thing about this, as we see, uh, one of the elements of prophecy and prophetic revelation is that it births expectation. Consider, for the times that we see throughout the Word of God, when the birth of Jesus was prophesied, a number of times we see throughout the scripture uh, that the level of expectation prior to the prophetic revelation was so low and so because things look so dismal. We know that in Isaiah, when the scripture uh, declares that a virgin shall conceive, this was a time when the children of Israel were under severe attack. They were surrounded an army that was created and designed to annihilate them. 
Now, the Bible tells us that this prophetic word that Isaiah gave uh, in Isaiah 7, 4, that this was the word of the Lord that was coming to them. Uh, pardon me, Isaiah 7, 14. This was the word of the Lord that was coming to the children of Israel to announce their deliverance at that time. And such as it is with prophecy, it was both relevant for that time and for times and seasons yet to come. So get out your pencils, jot these couple things down so that you can go back and look at these scriptures and so that you can write down some of the things that you know God has said to you that were an answer for a season in which you were in. It was designed to shift you out of the place of doubt, uh, unbelief, or dismay that you were in but it still has prophetic implication that keeps on rolling on and that can continue to carry you on into your divine destiny that God has promised for you. So here we are in Isaiah 7, 14. In Isaiah 7, 14, uh, let's look at this in context because the scripture says, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz saying, ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it for in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And Isaiah said, hear ye now, O house of David. So now we see that uh, prophetic announcement is going out to not only the particular person, but now the scope has broadened. O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself, himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So for that time and that season where they were, this was an answer for them. But it was prophetic revelation for time to come. Now, through our next break, I want to invite you, as you listen to the music and you're encouraged, jot down some of those things that the Lord has promised you in the past. Those prophetic revelations are to birth expectation in you. And I want you to be able to recall the things that the Lord has said and is yet to do. Something deep, not on the inside of you. Something so precious, only God could do. Yes, it's the gift that's given straight from the Master's hand. And it's for you to share, to fulfill God's plan. So stir it up, stir it up, stir it up.
So here we are, having heard the announcement, the prophetic revelation that God was going to be a deliverer for a specific time and season, but prophetic revelation has the very distinct purpose of shifting where we are and speaking to us for where we are going. So now we see in Isaiah 7, 14, that the Lord has announced to Ahaz, and now the spectrum has brought it to the entire house of David, that a virgin shall conceive, bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, one of the things I love about the scripture that we're going to touch on and continue on very quickly, although we could stay and develop this so much more, Dr. Holmes has always said, uh, particularly because of the, the army that was coming against the children of Israel at that time, because the, the, the devastation that they were known for, this prophetic word was so profound and so impacting because the armies that were set against the children of God at this time were known to annihilate, completely annihilate and obliterate and wipe off the face of the earth any nation or people that they came against. So for the Lord to give Isaiah a word that a virgin would conceive, it let them know that there was yet hope for their future, that there was yet light in their destiny, that this army would not be able to accomplish the purposes that it always was known to have accomplished. Now listen, I don't know what you might be facing today, as you're listening or as you're watching, the scripture is revealing that that which the enemy intends to completely annihilate us as the children of God, prophetic revelation not only lights where we are, it lets you know you can make it right now. You are going to get through by the power of God by the hand of God, by the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, you will get through what you're facing now. And while that might be enough to keep you holding on another day, I want to encourage you to let this prophetic revelation birth expectation. Because what the prophetic implications of this word is, is that not only will you make it another day, not only were the children of God going to survive, but the house of David was given a sure word of prophecy. Not only would a virgin conceive, therefore the uh, children of God would continue to be and to replenish the earth, but they would also be in a position where there would be wholeness, health, and healing. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And it says that his name shall be called Emmanuel. And Emmanuel, as you may very well know, means God with us. So there was a reassurance that whatever would come, any type of attack or any type of fear, any type of doubt, any type of threat that God was going to continue to be with them, of that they could be assured. And I want you to be assured today that God is with you, his answer and prophetic revelation for you now is you are going to make it. That's enough to help you keep on holding on another day. But let me encourage you again to take hold of prophetic expectation through this prophetic revelation. And that is that not only will you make it, but you're going to thrive. You're going to succeed. If you trust in the Lord and do good, the Bible promises you that you will eat the good of the land. That means that you'll not only survive, but you're going to come into a place of authority. For a virgin to conceive, for God to be with us, that means that this nation or that which is coming against you, no weapon that has been formed is going to be able to prosper against you. But that next part of the verse is very powerful as well. It says that every tongue that rises up against you, you will condemn. So you go from a place of succeeding and surviving to being in a place of authority. Now, this is the power of prophetic revelation. It births expectation. And we're going to look at a couple of New Testament scriptures where that's exactly the same thing that happened. And for those of you who are students of the word, I know you're already there with me because that's exactly what happened when the angel came and announced to Mary that you're going to have a child and you ought to call, you are to call his name Jesus. 
And the scripture says that this is the word of the Lord that birthed expectation in her that allowed her to begin to consider and ponder in her heart all those things that the angel had said. Isn't it powerful and awesome how God can speak to you in one moment and the power of that word will continue to be? Well, it's just as it happened in Genesis. He said, let there be light. And the sun, moon, stars, and all that was created throughout those days in creation continues to be even to this day. You know, the sun still gets up when it's supposed to. It goes down when it's supposed to. The moon keeps on shining. From that word, that, that prophetic word, and that an, an announcement from, the, from God and from the Lord is what has caused the earth to continue to replenish time and season to continue on, the planets to continue going around in their circuits, and nothing has stopped and moved unless the Word of God has told it to stop or move. And in your life, when you receive and continue to rehearse and meditate on the Word of the Lord God, you know, you've got to hold on to it. You can't let go of it. It is going to continue to produce in you the very things that God has destined for you. Now, listen. If you have looked through that last segment uh, and just jotted down, as I encourage you to do, some of the things that God has promised you, you might see that there's some things that you have yet to see a fulfillment of. And I want to encourage you to go back and take a hold of those promises and begin to meditate on them. A number of places you see throughout the scripture, like in Habakkuk chapter 2, the people of God, standing as watchmen on the wall, said, you know, I've got to get up and watch for this word to come to pass. I can't sleep or, 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 or sit, sit back and wait for it to happen. I have to be watchful over this word. And doesn't God tell us that he watches over his word to perform it? So here's Habakkuk. He's, he said, I'm going to get up as a watchman on the wall and look for what the Lord is going to reply. Because there's some things that he said. He said that he loves us. He said that he would keep us. He said that he would redeem us from the hand of our enemy. And he said, I see some things that are out of place. And that is when God came and he spoke to him. Many of you know the scripture. It says in Habakkuk chapter 2, God answered him and said, watch for the vision. It is yet for an appointed time. Though it seems to tarry, it will not tarry. It is coming. It is here. So I want to encourage you to watch for the word of God. Make a list of those things that God has promised you. If there were particular words that brought you out of place of doubt, dismay, or discouragement at that time, remember those words. If you've journaled them, go back in your journal. Look at the promises of God. See how they are yet, yes, and amen in your life. And as you watch over the word of God, you'll begin to see it manifest. You know, there's so many times when God's promises, they come right up to us and pass us by because we weren't watching for them. And we don't realize how many times and in how many ways God has kept his word to us. He's been faithful. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that even is an implication in the structuring of that scripture itself that lets us know God is true and faithful right now in your past and he will be in your future. But are you expecting? Have you taken a hold of the prophetic revelations that God has given you and watched over them? Have you, have you, uh, chronological, uh, have you listed chronologically how God is manifesting his word? You know, there's so many times and seasons that we miss that are passing us by that we can step right into and shift right into um, manifestations of, of the living word coming to pass in our life all around us. And sometimes if we're not watching, we can miss how God has been so very faithful and has been so very true to his word. Listen, I don't want you to miss it. So I want you to continue in this exercise throughout the rest of the program as the Lord uh, leads you to uh, continue to list and remember and recall the promises of God. Those promises that he made you that shifted you into a place of promise at that time that are now light for where you are right now. The most powerful thing that you can do with a prophetic revelation is allow it to birth expectation in you and to watch over it. 
And again, we take on the nature of our Lord. As he said, I will watch over my word. He said, my word won't return to me void, but it will accomplish the thing whereunto it is sent. So I want you to watch for how God is accomplishing his word in this season, in this Christmas season. Watch for how God has been faithful and is being faithful in your life. Don't miss this prophetic revelation coming to pass over and over and over again in your life. Well, let's take a look at the scriptures in the New Testament. And let's take a look at the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ um, as it's recorded in Luke. Because there's a lot of, uh, again, prophetic implications. A lot of angelic uh, and hosts of heaven are, are very much to, involved in this time uh, and season. And it allows us to see See, when the kingdom of God touches down in the earth in specific and glorious ways, you can begin to see some of the patterns that God will use. And as we come back into this time of a uh, festival of lights as celebrated through Hanukkah, and as we remember the birth of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have an opportunity to see if some of those same types of cycles and seasons are upon us. Again, as we watch for the word of the Lord, we can begin to see the parameters that he set up to bless us, to move us into new seasons of blessing and manifestation of his promises. So let's take a, a look at uh, Luke chapter 1. And let's take a look at uh, verse 19, where the angel of the Lord comes to Zacharias. The angel is answering Zacharias about uh, his questioning. He's revealed to him that he's going to have a son. And there's all kinds of reasons why Zacharias knows that that is impossible. But that's the power of God uh, at work in the life of mankind. Uh, making the impossible possible. So that's one of the keys as we begin to see uh, maybe there's something in your life that you knew was just never going to happen. You weren't expecting it. Now maybe you weren't watching for it like I'm encouraging you to, to do now and it just comes upon you by surprise. And you recognize in this season of your life that there's been so many blessings, so many unexpected blessings. That lets you know that's one of the parameters for a prophetic shift that is happening in your life. And God is making announcement to you that I'm shifting you into a place. You've stepped into a season, unbeknownst to you, but you've stepped into a season where the impossible has now become possible. Unfortunately, it took Zacharias, as it also does us at times, a little bit of time to shift. So the angel had to say this to, to him. I am Gabriel. He announces to him his name, uh, implicating to him the power and authority that he's speaking to him in. You know that name gives identity and, and the information about from which a person is speaking. So at this point, Zachariah is kind of uh, in trouble in a, in a host of heaven angelic way. He says, I stand in the presence of God. And you know, the angels and the hosts of heaven, they carry God's presence with them. Part of God's presence is truth. The Bible tells us that uh, righteousness, peace, and joy is in the Holy Ghost. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So there were some things that Zechariah should have been recognizing at this time. Uh, and even we know through the scriptures, and we'll have a chance to look at it in a little bit, that uh, the uh, those who studied in the East had seen the star announcing the birth of Christ, announcing the birth of the king. So um, there are several reasons here why Zechariah should have been getting with the program, if you will. But this is what Gabriel had to say to him to shift him. He said, I'm sent to speak to you. Not only is this a time and a season when you should be expecting the revelation of God, but you're specifically involved and you ought to know and you ought to believe when you hear it. And I'm going to show you these glad tidings. Behold, you will be dumb. You will not be able to speak until the day that these things will be performed because you believe not my words. Again, there's that word becoming flesh. It will be fulfilled. Look at what this says. In their season. Isn't God awesome? He makes his words so plain that even a child doesn't need to skip a beat. Now in this next segment, as you're listening to the beautiful music and it's encouraging your heart, let me encourage you, as you've listed those things that God has promised you, that shifted you in previous times and seasons, I want you to note the things that have recently come to pass. 
and make a list of those things, if you will, in this next segment of those recent blessings that God has given you. So you'll begin to be able to see the parameters in which God has you in as we look at the prophetic implications, revelation, and expectation that was birthed in the announcement of Jesus Christ. prophetic revelation that births expectation. We've looked at the scripture in Isaiah that announced the Lord Jesus Christ, his birth and his person, letting the children of God know that a virgin would conceive, shifting them from a place of dismay into a place of promise in that very moment. But as is the case so often with prophecy, its prophetic implications went on and on and on. So I've encouraged you to note some of the prophecies, some of the words of hope and the words of encouragement and the words of shifting that the Lord has given you in the past. And now as we look at the times and season in which the birth of Jesus Christ happened, and we've looked now at Luke chapter 1 and the angel that is announcing, Gabriel the angel that is announcing to Zacharias uh, the birth of John the Baptist, we want to look and see where we are today with the words of prophecy uh, that the Lord is giving us. If he's shifted you into a place of the impossible becoming possible, I don't want you to miss your moment of manifestation. Your moment of manifestation becomes obvious when the uh, unexpected blessings of the Lord begin to overtake you. And that's why I wanted to encourage you in this last segment, and I hope you've done the uh, just the simple exercise of noting, uh, either on your phone, texting it to yourself, or writing it down 
or making note of it in a journal or in your study materials, how God is blessing you right now. It will allow you to see the parameters of your blessing, the parameters of your shifting. And when you pay attention to the parameters of your shifting and the parameters of your manifestation, you can begin to track the work of Jesus Christ. Again, let me remind you, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the prophetic principles that we see at work in the word of God are what we're lifting out today, specifically reminding you and letting you know that prophetic revelation births expectation and it allows us to see what God is doing in our lives. So here we are in Luke chapter 1. As the angel Gabriel is speaking to Zacharias, he's let him know that because he did not believe the words that uh, the angel spoke to him, because they would be fulfilled in their season and because he did not believe that he would be unable to speak. Now, I just want to take a moment here to, um, to assist us if we're stuck. If we're in a place where the things that we do naturally and the things that we do normally aren't moving us into our place of prosperity, it's a symbolism of not being able to speak because Zacharias was a priest and he was the one serving in the house of God at that time. And that is, as he was doing his daily administration, the word tells us when the angel Gabriel came to him. So he wasn't in a backslidden state, but he was not in a believing state. And there's a difference for you and I as well. We may be serving the Lord, doing all we know. Maybe you're leading worship. Maybe you're pastoring. Maybe you're setting up churches. Maybe you're holding service and continuously doing the work of the Lord that God has called you to do. So you're not in a backslidden state. You're in the worker state, but you're not in a believing state. And if God came and gave you a promise right now, just like he did with Zacharias, that had to do with your impossibilities, you might find it hard to believe unless you have allowed prophetic revelation to birth in you prophetic expectation. Now, the way that we do this is by looking at the keys of Jesus' birth. We're going to see in the next couple of scriptures how the wise men came from the east. The scripture tells us that they were studying the uh, prophecies, that they were studying and watching the stars, to see that the star in the east had come to manifest its light and to point to the location where the king of kings would be born. Now, the Bible tells us that these wise men came and they were willing to travel from a far place. But why was that? That was because they were watching with expectation. And that is the key to shifting from a place of uh, disbelief to a place of belief is continuing re to rehearse the promises of God in our life. It lets us know, number one, what God has said that he will do. And it allows us to see how our seasons and times are lining up with God's word. And it allows us also to see when they're not lining up. You know, we have the authority to speak to things to line up. And we see here that the very act of Zacharias and Elizabeth having a child was a physical impossibility. But it was the words that the angel Gabriel spoke to Zacharias that he was to believe. And it was the consequences of not believing was that he wouldn't be able to speak. So here's the keys. The consequences of you and I not believing Again, even if we're serving and even if we're saved, saved and serving, but not believing, is that the things that come naturally to us, our, our, our natural uh, fluid movements, will become stagnant. So if you're seeing anything in your life that is stagnant, that you used to be able to do very fluidly, very easily, and you're seeing that that has begun to stop up or becomes a difficulty or becomes hard, I want to invite you especially if you know that you're serving the Lord with all that you have, to ask the Lord to ignite your spirit to believe, to believe and to trust him again. Even as you begin to make the declaration to tell your spirit, your mind and your soul, trust the Lord God. I like the way David said it in the Old Testament. He talked to himself a lot and there's a lot of prophetic implications there. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, 
and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He said, why so downcast, O my soul? Hope thou in God. So you've got to talk to your inner man. You've got to speak to your emotions. You've got to speak to those places where deep-seated disappointment has caused you to disbelieve the very promises of God that he has for you and say, expectation, rise. Hope come alive. I hope in God. I put my trust in him. I turn a blind eye to the way the circumstances look and I open my prophetic eyes. I open the eyes of my inner man. I allow the eyes of my spirit man to be alone, to be enlightened, to allow the Lord Jesus Christ in this time and season of Advent, in this time and season of light, to birth expectation in me once again. I will trust the Lord. I will believe his word. I will see an accomplishment of those things that the Lord has promised me. I want to encourage you to make that declaration, speak it forth, because the words that have come to you from the throne of God, the promises that he's made to you, they are yes and amen. But you don't want to find yourself in a place of being stagnant and being unable to produce and unable to believe when the time and the season for the word to manifest comes. You want to be able to believe. I want you to be able to believe. So let me encourage you before you find yourself or if you find yourself in a place of disbelief to begin to speak the word and declare the word of God over your mind, body, soul, and spirit, over your emotions, declaring that you will believe and call your expectation and your hope alive. I call your expectation and your hope alive again in Jesus name. And I will continue to pray that everything that God has promised you will not only manifest, but that you will believe, that you will expect. So the other implications of this is that the power of the word. Gabriel said, I, I stand in the presence of God. So that very word that I'm coming to announce to you has power all over it, all in it and all through it. And that's the same way it is with the precious word of God that's been revealed to us as well. You can take any portion of it and begin to meditate on it, begin to see it manifest in your life. If there is any hope or expectation that has begun to dwindle in your life, I challenge you, get a scripture and begin to meditate on it, begin to confess it. Not only speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord to lift up your expectation and to renew your belief and cut off disbelief, but let me encourage you, if God's promised you regarding salvation of your loved ones, if he has promised you uh, blessings in the material realm, if he's promised you blessings in the financial realm, if he's promised you blessings in your ministry, or he's made promises to you in your marriage or in your home, get a hold of the word of God. Because you'll see in this scripture, when Zechariah came and he spoke, when Gabriel came and he spoke to Zechariah, he said to him, believe my words. So you want to continue to rehearse the word and the word of God will become manifest in your life. It will also allow your expectation to be raised. Coupling that with your decree to raise your expectations and decree that your hope will be raised and decree to your hope to be raised, that will bring you back into a place of harmony and back into a place of communion with the divine will of God. We're going to look in this next segment at the response of Mary that allowed prophetic revelation to birth expectation in this time and this season. I want you to be encouraged and I want you to be able to see the word of God uh, manifest in your life. I want it to jump off the pages and become real in your life. So let's take a look at this scripture and begin to, um, begin to unravel how we believe and how we trust.
final segment at the response of Mary, the mother of Jesus, as it pertains to prophetic revelation that births expectation in this time and season. You know, it's important to understand um, the prophetic implications and the revelation that is housed in the birth of Jesus Christ. It's, it's so manifold, uh, truly as is the wisdom of God. So we're just touching upon a few things. But I'm sure that as you continue to study in this word, and I just want to encourage you in this last segment to continue to search the scriptures. It's in them that we know uh, that eternal life is revealed. And it's those scriptures, hallelujah, just as Jesus said, that speak of him. So we've gone back uh, from Isaiah and even uh, pulled in a little bit of the understanding from Genesis of the power of God's word. When he says something, not only does he do it, but he continues to see and watch over his word to see that it continues to manifest his promises. So the birth of Jesus shows us that there is power in prophetic revelation, prophetic impartation, and it births prophetic expectation. Now, the last two segments of prophetic expectation is what I want to touch on now um, so that we can also transition then and in, and in understanding prophetic impartation. Because, you know, um, you and I, we may recognize and know the things that God has said to us, um, much like we're about to see with, with Mary, and still have questions about how it's going to come to pass. And we uh, choose to believe. We shift into a place of expectation and believing. Um, but when we begin to expect prophetically, that's different than just hope and is different than just expectation because prophetic expectation, which is birthed from prophetic revelation, is what allows you to watch in a waiting season. And this is the word of the Lord that came to Habakkuk, which we talked about and touched on in the last segment. When you are waiting in and of yourself, it can seem wearisome and uh, the longevity of waiting on the promise can wear you down physically, emotionally, spiritually. But prophetic expectation is tied to and birthed in prophetic revelation. And that's why it's necessary to go back and take a hold of the promises. You remember that Paul said to Timothy, Timothy, I want you to continue to hold on to those prophecies that went upon you, that went before, that were spoken over you. By them, you will war a good warfare. So you have to fight and contend for your promise to come to pass. We see this throughout many of those who are listed in what we call the Hall of Faith in the book of Hebrews. The scripture says that many of them stopped floods, stopped fires, received their dead back to life again. But many of them, the scripture tells us, died in faith believing. How powerful is it then after Jesus died on the cross, the scripture tells us that he went into the graves, hallelujah, and preached the gospel to those that were waiting there. That is the power of prophetic expectation. It's not just hope. It's not just, oh, I hope it will happen. I hope it does. I could see how maybe it could. If this person comes into my life, if this so-and-so institution gives me the money, if this one makes sure that I get the tuition to my college, if that person gives me the down payment to my home, or if this person moves to, from state to state, or if I was living here or there, all those different reasons why we can think uh, how it could happen naturally. Let me tell you, prophetic revelation of this type that is happening in this season now, it births prophetic expectation. And when you allow prophetic expectation to begin to flow in your heart, 
It's a type of expectation that continues to rehearse and meditate on the promises of God. And it really allows you to believe that whatever is necessary for the promises of God to manifest is going to happen. And it's not dependent on a person, a place, or a thing. Because you're reassured that the God of the universe, he can do whatever he needs to do. However he needs to do it through whomever he chooses to do it through. This is the power of prophetic expectation. It is more than just hope. It is a fire that lights your hope and allows you the joy of believing. And it's not a strain or a stress. And it's not a burden. And it's not a wearisome thing to believe the Lord your God. But you trust him with all of your mind, heart, soul, all your body, all your strength, with all your might. And you watch and you wait. And that is where the scripture tells us, they that wait upon the Lord, you serve him in expectation. Those are the ones that will mount up with the wings as eagles. They will be the ones that run and aren't weary, that walk and don't faint. Why? Because prophetic expectation gives you joy and it gives you strength. So as you look over these promises of God and what he's done in the past and what he's speaking to you now, the impossibilities that he's made possible now, I pray that it bursts in you prophetic expectation, not just hope, but that that prophetic revelation that God has given you and that he is manifesting in your life will light the fire of your hope and allow you to expect and therefore birth prophetic impartation. Prophetic impartation is what allows us um, not only to expect and to um, add fire to our hope, but prophetic impartation is what allows us to face opposition and to uh, be moved by the Spirit of God uh, with the power necessary and the authority necessary to stand and see the manifestation. Uh, this very important uh, element of prophetic revelation is seen in the life of Jesus Christ in that uh, Mary uh, and Joseph, once they received prophetic revelation, then they allowed that by believing the word of God and rehearsing his promises and shifting into that place of belief to, uh, to allow it to birth prophetic expectation. They then watched for the promise. They watched for how God was going to lead them. They watched for how God was going to uh, move them. And this is what led them to prophetic impartation because Herod was seeking the life of the child, the scripture tells us. But uh, Joseph mo didn't move in fear. He moved by prophetic revelation that was brought to him by the angels. Uh, by the angel, letting him know where to go and what to do. But how many of you know that just knowing what to do doesn't automatically mean that you have the courage or the authority to do it? Do you remember in the life of Esther, uh, Mordecai was there giving her constant prophetic um, information and revelation. It birthed in her expectation, but then she needed a prophetic impartation to believe. Yes? So, you and I, need to be able to stand in a place where we know and can assess what do I need to do to move into my place of authority to see the manifestations of God in my life. Because for many of us, if God did right now what we've been wanting him to do, expecting him to do, waiting for him to do, we wouldn't be ready for it. We wouldn't have the house to house the blessings that he promised to give us. We wouldn't have enough uh, space on our block that we currently live on to invite over all the people that we'd want to celebrate with. So there's got to uh, gotta be a shifting to a place of authority. And this is what happened with Esther. She says, all right now, Mordecai, I've got the prophetic revelation. I've got a prophetic expectation and it's shifting me into a place of responsibility and I need prophetic impartation. And this is what Mordecai said to her. If you don't manifest the deliverance that God has called you and put you in place for, God will raise up deliverance from another place. And this is the word of the Lord that separates us from the place of knowing and the place of manifestation. Because there's a place of knowing and there's a place of authority where you can walk in the knowing and begin to see it manifest. So here's what Esther did. She says, uh, like the man in the New Testament, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. She said, all right, 
I'm going to the king. If I perish, then let me perish. But here's what I need. Here's the things that I need to shift in the spirit to my place of prophetic impartation. I have an expectancy and I understand the revelation that there is an enemy of the people of God that wants to annihilate us, that has already begun to build gallows and already has things set up in place and is already in a place of prominence and a place of promise and a place of, of position uh, to be able to carry out this annihilation. So I want to ask you, Mordecai, to pray, all those of you, and I and my maiden, she said, will also fast and pray. So this is one of the main things that I want to encourage you to do, to follow the pattern in the word of God, to receive prophetic impartation, to walk in the authority, is begin to fast and pray, begin to seek God in that very specific way. If there's other things that you know in the past have also shifted you into a place of believing and a place of manifestation, make note of those things. Go back to those landmarks and begin to draw strength from them. If it's prayer time, if it's fellowship with other believers, maybe you've noticed uh, that you haven't been able to make time to fellowship with others, especially in this time and season when things are so busy and we think we have to go shopping here and there and we're moving about and attending different types of activities, events, holiday parties, and so on, etc. Make time to receive prophetic impartation. Because that will shift you to the place of authority that you need to stand in to see the promises of, of God manifest. Let's look straight together uh, very quickly at uh, the book of John. So we can see in these last couple of moments uh, the things that, uh, that Mary did and said. I'm sorry, the book of Matthew. That Mary did and said that shifted her from a place of revelation that birth expectation into impartation. Now, the Bible tells us that uh, Mary uh, was a virgin who conceived, and that alone was a complexity that she immediately had to uh, release to the Lord and say, well, this is a situation that the promises of God brings me into, that I've got to receive authority from God and grace in that authority to walk in. Can you imagine having to walk that out as a young girl in uh, Jerusalem at that time? For her to receive that type of promise, she needed to receive a grace for impartation. And that impartation of grace is what allowed her to quietly wait, watch, and ponder and see the word of the Lord God. Let me leave you with this last verse in Matthew 1. The scripture says that the announcement came to Mary. You will bring forth a son. Call his name Jesus. He will save people from their sins and all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord and the Bible tells us that Mary believed she said be it unto me the handmaiden of the Lord as it is spoken by the Lord as soon as you speak out of your mouth that you will trust and believe the Lord you transfer prophetic revelation into expectation and receive impartation. Whatever you've got to do to stand in the place of God, to receive his promises, I want to encourage you to do that today. Take hold of his promise. Let the word of God birth in you, fire and add it to your hope so that you can stand in this season in a place of expectation and have the authority of impartation that will allow you to stand just as Mary did, believing and expecting to see God. I pray this has been an awesome hour of deliverance for you in your life. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you on behalf of Dr. Holmes, Deliverance International, and all the believers and saints. Have a great Christmas season of expectation. You are blessed and anointed of God. You are ablaze with the glory of God. God has blessed the work of your hands and you walk in favor with God and man. You think from the word and you make wise moves. You are blessed and excel in all that you do. You always attract people of wisdom and an excellent spirit and you engage in transactions and situations of vast, excellent and lasting merit. You are occupied with people and endeavors on a plane of timely, immediate, high and positive return. 
in the internal, the external, and the eternal realm, in the temporal, the celestial, the natural, the spiritual, in the personal, interpersonal, community, national, and global. You move in all that pertains to life and godliness, according to the promises of God in all of their fullness. You are continuously and profoundly supplied in time, resources, wisdom, and health, in favor and finance, and all manner of wealth, in revelation and vision of things present and things to come, in the knowledge and understanding and zeal of the Holy One. You are called to His glory, His virtue, and His praise. You are elected to His power, His loving kindness, and His grace. You are clothed with humility, and you are prudent in matters. You are blessed and anointed, highly favored and appointed, and you are full of the Word of God and its demonstration. God has appointed your going out and your coming in. He has ordained that your very life exemplify Him. Righteousness, justice, and holiness unto the Lord is the mark of your call. And the resurrection power and the glory of God, you will fulfill all. You are blessed and anointed of God. You are ablaze with the glory of God.